Hello and welcome back to Ajua Biotech. I'm Ajua and today we're diving into the crucial first step of any successful Western blot experiment, sample preparation. Proper preparation is essential for accurate and reproducible results. Let's get started. Firstly, let's look at the importance of sample preparation. Why is sample preparation so important? Well, it directly affects the quality of your results. Poor preparation can lead to degraded proteins, inconsistent loading, and ultimately unreliable data. By following these steps, you ensure your samples are ready for the best possible outcomes. So let's talk about sample collection and storage. Whether you're using tissue or cells, it's crucial to work quickly and keep everything on ice to prevent protein degradation. After collection, store your samples at minus 80 degrees Celsius until you're ready to proceed. Now we are looking at cell lysis. The goal here is to break open the cells to release the proteins. Use a lysis buffer appropriate for your sample type. Common components include TRIS, sodium chloride, EDTA, and detergents like SDS or Triton X100. Add protease and phosphatase inhibitors to prevent protein degradation. You want to mix the buffer with your samples. Incubate on ice for 30 minutes and vortex periodically. Finally, you then want to centrifuge the lysate at high speed to pellet cell debris and collect the supernatant containing your proteins. For tissues, mixing the buffer with your samples will not be sufficient. You will then have to homogenize or use some kind of mechanical process to also disrupt the tissues and release the cells that contain the proteins. Okay, so we've released the proteins. Before we go to load, in order to be able to compare what's truly happening at the biological end and not, do, and not confound things due to techniques, we want to quantify the proteins so that we can load equal amounts of proteins in each lane of the gel. You can use a protein assay such as the Bradford or BCA assay, but for many applications, you can also just do a nanodrop spectrophotometry just to get some rough idea of how much protein you have. Often though, with the nanodrop, because of the kinds of buffers you use for disrupting your proteins or the cells, it tends to not be compatible. So just make sure that if you are using a nanodrop, then your lysis buffer is compatible with it. Otherwise, Bradford or BCA assays are quite commonly used. When using a BC or Bradford assay, you need to prepare standards and your samples and then measure the absorbance using a spectrophotometer. The nanodrop is easier. You don't need standards, but again, many of the buffers you're going to use in Western blotting are not compatible. So once we have our concentrations, we want to do sample normalization. The aim here is to normalize your samples to the same protein concentration. This is crucial for accurate comparisons. You want to dilute your samples with lysis buffer or loading buffer to achieve the desired concentration. Now that we've normalized the samples, we can now think about loading our sample. So we want to add loading buffer and reducing agents. Before adding your samples onto the gel, you want to add loading buffer and reducing agents like beta mercaptoethanol or DTT. The DTT tends to not have a smell. The beta mercaptoethanol smells very strongly. So watch out for that and probably aspirate it in the fume hood. This will ensure that the proteins are denatured and it will break any disulfide bonds, ensuring they run properly on the gel. Reduces disulfide bonds between the proteins called, formed by cysteines. The SDS, sodium docesyl sulfate, assists in denaturing the protein and also provides a net negative charge to the protein. So once again, you're separating based on molecular weight and not charge or native structure. It also contains glycerol and this simply weights down the sample so that it settles into the well. It also contains bromophenol blue and this is to help you visualize the lysate. 
It also typically contains an ionic buffer. Okay, so let's say you've done all that, but then something dramatic happens in your life. Life happens and you need to go. You can't actually run your gel. Well, you can actually store the sample until you need it next. So here we can discuss sample storage and handling. If you're not running your gel immediately, you can store your samples at minus 20 degrees or minus 80 degrees Celsius. Always handle your samples gently to avoid degradation. When you're ready to run the samples on your SDS page gel, this is what you do. If you stored your samples overnight, then when it's, you're ready to run the samples, you need to throw it on ice, vortex it, then heat it up at 95 degrees Celsius and let it stay for five minutes before going on to loading on the gel. If you didn't stop, then just go ahead and vortex your samples and then incubate at 95 degrees Celsius for five minutes and then you're ready to run it on the gel. So we're getting to the end of the video and finally we can look at a few troubleshooting tips. Firstly, always keep your samples on ice. Use fresh reagents and make sure your lysis buffer is compatible with your protein of interest. If you're working with cultured cells, then be sure to wash the cells twice with buffer, for example, ice cold PBS. And then once you add the lysis buffer, make sure that it's covering the entire cells. Your choice of lysis buffer will depend on the location of the protein that you are interested in. If you're interested in isolating a protein that's membrane bound, you're going to need a stronger lysis buffer than say if you are getting a protein that's cytoplasmic. Ripper buffer is a standard buffer that tends to be used because it allows you to obtain maximum yield of proteins. Proteins from all cellular locations. If your sample is from cells, then you can simply lyse the cells by pipetting up, up and down after adding the lysis buffer. Western blots are typically performed under reducing and denatured condition. And this is because you want the proteins to be separated based on their molecular weight rather than based on their native 3D conformation. Because proteins in their native state may sometimes be negatively charged, some may be positively charged, and some may be neutral. A typical buffer that is used in Western blot is called the Lamely buffer, and this buffer has beta mecaptoethanol. ethanol. It also has SDS. The beta mecaptoethanol ethanol or DTT reduces cysteine ridges. That's it for today's video on Western blot sample preparation. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Ajua Biotech for more science tutorials. You have any questions or tips of your own? Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. God bless.